Bienvenidos a todos. This is Abelardo de la Peña Jr. Welcoming you to En Casa con la Plaza on this historic Wednesday, November 4th. A little shaky here, but we're going to do good well. This is a great show that we have in store for you tonight on En Casa con la Plaza. We're bringing together quite a few people from a performance that we had, a series of performances that we had. Bienvenidos a todos. This uh -oh. is Abelardo de la Peña Jr. Welcoming you to En Casa con la Plaza. Okay, I'm with multiple here. Sorry about that. <laughs> like I said, this is live. This happens. But we're here. El Cico Anahuac. It's an Aztec opera telling the ancient tale of twin volcanoes outside of Mexico City. And it was staged successfully at La Plaza during October and November of 2018. The pandemic halted plans for 2020, including fundraisers and performances. So today we have the librettist, Maria Elena Yepes, composer David Reyes, director Steven Loza, and a cast, not of thousands, but of a few more who participated or have been planning to participate in the next productions. At En Casa, of course, you have our chat here where you can let us know where you're coming from, where are you viewing from? Also, you can ask a question in our Q&A if you're on our Facebook Live, please ask questions, uh, make comments, let us know where you're viewing from. We'd love to hear from you. This is an interactive presentation. Okay, I'm gonna introduce each one of our panelists. I wish I could make it brief, but these people have so many accomplishments, it might take a little while, but then we'll be speaking and asking questions to each. First of all, De David Reyes, the producer, musical director, and composer. David developed an interest in modern classical music in the early 70s and studied it seriously in college and in Europe, where he trained with modern masters. Back in LA, he's worked with the late Dorrance Stalvi, musical director of LACMA, and Aurelio de la Vega, faculty member of California State Northridge. But all of his interests aren't just in opera. He's produced three, the three CDs set for Rhino Records called Brown Eyed Soul, and was associate producer for the PBS documentary Chicano Rock. Co-author Land of a Thousand Dances and co-curator the exhibit Roots of the East Side Sound. He was the producer and songwriter for East Side Heartbeats, which played at Casa 0101 Theater in LA in 2016. He's currently a producer with Brown Fist Productions, and for this, production El Circo Anahuac, he scored for Voices, Chamber, and the Chamber Ensemble. We also have with us Maria Elena Reyes, Yepes, excuse me, as the executive producer and librettist, an educator, writer, community activist for the past 40 years. She's dedicated her professional career to providing higher educational opportunities for the most underserved populations in LA, appointed by Supervisor Gloria Molina to serve on the LA County Board of Education, where she served a two-year term. Since 2012, she served as the Board of Directors for Plaza Community Services and in 2017 became the first president of the Board of Directors of the East LA Com College Community Alumni Association. El Circo Anahuac marks her first artistic piece written for publication and in wide distribution. She's proud to bring this Aztec opera to the stage. Steven Losa is the director, who this guy, Professor of Ethnomusicology at UCLA, where he has been on the faculty for 34 years. Also at University of New Mexico, where he formerly directed the Arts of the Americas Institute. He served as chair of the Department of Ethnomusicology and currently chair of the Global Jazz Studies Interdepartmental Program at, and serving as director of the UCLA Center for the Latino Arts at UCLA. He's published books. Four of them, Barrio Rhythm, Mexican-American Music in Los Angeles, Tito Puente in the Making of Latin Music, and a couple others. He's performed a great amount of jazz and Latin jazz, and has produced numerous concerts and arts festivals. Welcome, Dr. Steven Losa. We have with us also Janelle Gonzalez, the artistic director, choreographer, dancer, and costume designer for 
El Circo Aranjua. A trained dancer in modern postmodern ballet, jazz, Mexican folk, and danza azteca, she studied dance art in education at Cal State LA and Cal State Long Beach. She also has traveled abroad to the Netherlands for additional studies. At age 19, she became professional, has both danced and worked with the Francisco Martinez Dance Theater, the Rudy Perez Dance Ensemble, Jazz Dancers Inc., the Bella Lewiski Dance Company. She's been a, a, in the Zoot Suit, Mi Familia, Hollywood Olvidado, the Ballet Folclorico, Folclorico del Pacifico, and the Latino Theater Center. With her, her intent in El Circo Anahuac was always first to combine both elements of modern danza azteca with a hint of Mexican folk and ballet. We have also with us Danny Cabrera, the dancer, born and raised in LA with a background in theater, commercial acting, and singing. He attended the Conservatory of the Performing Arts at Cal State LA. At Pasadena City College, he became co-captain of the AGDT of the Athletic Garage for two seasons, as well as choreographer. He now teaches at the Athletic Garage Dance Center. Also with us tonight, Rosa Evangelina Bertran, one of the singers, a mezzo-soprano, an alumna of Opera NEO, Opera Works, and the LA Valley College Applied Music Program. She's performed with Pacific Opera Project, Center Stage, Opera, Guild Opera, Repertory Opera, and the West Valley Playhouse. Opera credits include Don Giovanni, Carmen, Romeo and Juliet, Suor Angelica, and the Pirates of Penzance, and many more. Recent highlights include singing a very pregnant La Siesca and Gian, Gianni Schicci with Santa Monica College Opera Theater, Santa Monica College Opera Theater. And then we have Joe Green. Unfortunately, I did not get Joe's bio on time. So Joe, why don't you join us and tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, my name is Joe Green. I'm a fourth year uh, voice and opera student uh, at uh, UCLA's music school, Schoenberg Music School. Um, and uh, it's a privilege to be here with so many illustrious figures in the LA music scene. Oh, and I'm a tenor. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you so much. Okay, well, we'll start with um, some questions here on my part to you again. On Facebook, I know we're, we're around here somewhere. I have to find you again, but uh, comment, chat, let us know where you're coming from. Same with, uh, with the Zoom. And uh, first of all, David, David and Maria Elena, by your credits, we see that you've worked together as Brown Fist Productions before, prior to this. Tell us about the creation of Ercico Anahuac, either David or Maria Elena. Well, uh, in Circo Nahuac, um, I started uh, writing the um, rhythm patterns for Circo Nahuac uh, a while ago, I, um, a few years ago, actually. And uh, in doing so, I, I, uh, I caught the rhythm of an old washing machine that was washing clothes, and I enjoyed the pattern. So uh, what I did, I used that pattern, and I wrote it down. So the pattern went pa 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 pa. That's what I started with, and I wrote that down. And then I said to myself, "Well, I need some more percussion," so I added it. And then it turned out that I started seeing and hearing a circus ensemble performing this opera, and I had the overture, and I played it for Maria Elena and for uh, Janelle at a very early stage. And uh, Maria Elena agreed to write the libretto, which is the story for the opera. And um, so what we did was we had this uh, ongoing production, writing and um, you know fixing things here and there. And finally we had the performance at La Plaza, and which was incredible. We sold out all the shows at La Plaza, and uh, I want to thank Abelardo for all uh, La Plaza's help, and uh, all the people that were there were just very gracious to us. And um, like I said, I ran the idea by um, to uh, Maria Elena, and she agreed to do it, kind of reluctantly at first, but then she started uh, coming up with some ideas, and boom, it happened. And uh, 
the issue was, I think that I, I wanted a circus theme throughout the opera. So that's where we're at now. And Maria Elena, if you want to take over. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so that's true. He wanted a circus theme and I wasn't getting anything. I started researching circuses and it was like nothing was inspiring me until for some reason I ran into Los Voladores, the aerial artists, you know, that from uh, Papantla and um, in Mexico. And I was fascinated by the fact that there was this gigantic pole and all, and there's like six aerial artists that were way up at the top of the pole. And then they started descending, going around in a circle. They have like ropes attached to them and the circle gets bigger and bigger until they get down to the ground and they actually land on their feet. And it's a very dangerous, it's a very dangerous uh, trick, but they get it done and it's been done for, I started reading more about it and I found out that it was a very ancient, um, ancient uh, display. And before I knew it, I was, I was reading about the, uh, the, uh, the birth of the twin volcanoes, the Aztecs, the birth of the twin volcanoes outside of Mexico City. And that's when I got interested. And so I, I started reading about them and it's, you know, the, the, the whole story, first of all, has never changed. It's never changed since it first came around. So it's like 600, 600 years old at least, uh, probably more. And, um, I read it and it was like it had all the elements of an opera, right? You have a king, you have his daughter, the princess, you have these two knights. He sends out his, his uh, uh, preferred, preferred knight because of the fact that he, he is in love with his daughter. The knight is in love with his daughter. And the king tells him that he will give his daughter to him if in marriage, if he bring, you know, he's victorious when he goes out to war. And then you have the rival knight who's in love with the princess, but you know, doesn't really stand much of a chance. So therefore uh, he cheats and lies his way into her life. Um, she believes that her lover is dead. So she kills herself, not realizing that he was still alive. He comes back, he dies of sadness from seeing that she's already dead. So the, outcome is that the, the gods take pity on them and turn them into those two volcanoes that are outside of Mexico City. Popocaltepetl, who is the Smoky Mountain, always smoking, that volcano, and Isla Siwat, the sleeping woman, who is full of snow right next to the other mountain, and she looks like a woman that is lying down. So um, it, it just it just fit as an opera. So I thought, well, let me write it. And he wanted a circus. So, okay, so a modern circus is telling the story of these two, of these lovers, you know, and how the mountains came about. And that's how the story was born. And then I just kind of started making up characters and making up um, situations in which they could be in a circus. All right. Well, in case uh, our viewers out there aren't familiar with this, I'm sure you're familiar with this image here which uh, yes. is, is in uh, uh, calendars in every Mexican Mexican American Chicano household uh, the panaderia, exactly. panaderia. Uh, yes. but it's, it is the legend of Popo Catepetl and Isa Siwat or Popo Nista uh, which is the basis of the of this opera correct uh, now uh, how was the story you explained a little bit but how was the story incorporated to become an opera Maybe your, yourself or David could answer this. Well, basically, um, I wrote it, you know, as a libretto. I wrote it in poetry form. I started adding direction to it simply because there was the idea of trying to portray what the characters were doing at the time. Um, I wanted it to be a situation where they were put back into the 15th century but at the same time, you have these circus performers doing the, the play, so the opera, excuse me. So what you have is these aerial artists, you have aerial artists, you have magic, a magician, um, you have uh, a narrator that is like the, the ringmaster of the circus. And, you know, I've added more to it now with, a, with the expanded version. 
but basically you had these characters portraying, circus characters portraying the characters of the 15th century. And uh, it, it's an opera because David wanted to write an opera. He wanted to write an opera about a circus. So as I started to show him the libretto, he liked it and he started putting music to it, but he had already written the introduction of it through the uh, inspiration of that old washing machine that he had, you know, so it was a, it was a mutual labor, basically. So, so how long did it take from the concept where you both got together to mm -hmm. production? So, mm -hmm. and, and if you could maybe yourself or David just kind of explain mm -hmm. uh, the moving parts, all the parts that you had to bring together mm -hmm. to bring it to actual production. Well, um, one of the earliest, well, Maria Elena and I got together, um, we realized that uh, there should be choreography mm -hmm. involved. So uh, we knew Janelle and, and we knew about her in, as a choreographer as well. And so we asked her uh, for her input. And uh, that time I had only the overture ready and recorded and uh, I gave it to her and uh, she came up with uh, 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 the choreography for the overture. And that's how that got started. And then we just started adding more music, I did, and to the libretto. Uh, I started, I already had the idea of a ringmaster at the beginning. Uh, I remember I shared that with Maria Elena. Uh, I had this idea for a ringmaster. I, and I had already, I had already started writing the music. And in my, in my writing, um, the, the, the ringmaster was gonna do only narration. He wasn't going to sing. Uh, so uh, there's some inflections in, in the voice and stuff just to give it more character, but the, the narration uh, was all he was going to do. So I had already written the music kind of for it. It was really um, my first, I had the overture written and then the ringmaster's music written. Then came, uh, the character's music after that. And that's the new material at that time that uh, Maria Elena had written. But before that, like I mentioned, we got together with Janelle and she came up with some choreography for the overture. And it just really uh, uh, shook me. You know, I was like uh, amazed that uh, someone else was interpreting my music that I have no idea how to interpret mm -hmm. it in that way. So it really was a, a really beautiful feeling to see this and to see her, her movement, her feet movement, her uh, in, in this early part of the opera, just the overture uh, was really thrilling. And it, it made us even more, okay, we got, I think we got something here. Uh, and uh, Janelle, if you wanna contribute to there, uh, I'll meet myself. Yeah. Yeah, now no, I, I feel the same way. I think um, when I met Maria Elena and David, I had known them previously, um, introduced to them previously. We kind of worked on different levels at that time. Um, David, I met you uh, through your through your book signings, of course, right. mm -hmm. and, and uh, interviews that we produced for you and to, to, for those book signings. And Maria Elena um, as well, I've known, you've been my mentor for many years. So um, I it was a pleasure to be asked to, to create something from, from, from the beginning. Um, and when I hear that story, I remember uh, the same feeling that you had with that rhythm when you heard the washing machine is the same feeling I had when I heard your, your, your overture and I just visually saw this, this, this circo. This was a circus, but for me, when I translated, it was a circle. It was like an, an, a never ending circle of movement that was just going to be continuous. And when I demonstrated it to you, just footwork and some uh, continuous arm movement, I could imagine all of the, the characters dancing along with me. It was like, it just was not going to stop um, because it kept crescendoing. The music was crescendoing gradually as, as it went along. And so, it was it was riveting. It felt uh, it felt just as thrilling for me to 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 finally uh, connect with two people that understood all of my training. You know, um, modern ballet, uh, jazz, 
um, jazz dance, of course, um, and uh, and um, dance Azteca, which was which I learned mostly for stage. So um, when I when I look now at dance with troops, you know, um, danzantes, and I see that footwork, it it you could feel it resonate. It just like just it's powerful, and that's what I felt in David's music at that particular time was like, wow, the two combined, that wasn't including the singers yet. So I, okay. it like layer after layer and, and come to 2018, it was mind blowing for me to see it all come together with music, dance, opera. It was just an explosion. So it's, it's been, it's been a while, but it's, been, it feel, every single time it feels new and refreshed and revived. It's just like our culture. It never dies. <laughs> it's here. Right. Okay, thank you. Now, now uh, it, it, this is an opera. When, when people uh, like myself, you know, novices of the opera, when you think of operas, you think of the big voices, the, the, okay. the, 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 the interaction between the leads and the, and the choruses. Yes. And this has those. Uh, and we'll see a clip later, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but you had to pull in so many people. Mm -hmm. Of course, it started off with the three of you, mm -hmm. but you had mm -hmm. to pull in so many people, not mm -hmm. just uh, uh, who were on stage, but also mm -hmm. behind the scenes, the stage mm -hmm. director, uh, uh, the conductor, the, the, mm -hmm. the designer, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, what was that process like? The process was really, the, the, it's almost like the same way that we met Janelle, you know, it just happens that you know someone who knows someone, you know, so David is very well versed in music. We started talking about that and he said, oh, well, I know someone, you know, that could probably do the conducting, let me find out. Um, this, is, these are the, this is the person's qualifications. He also, because he's well versed in music and classical music, he had contacts that could provide us with singers. So he went ahead and started calling people. And uh, we, then they, uh, Rosa started, you know, she submitted her, uh, her video so that we could see it. Janelle uh, went ahead and uh, um, uh, interviewed the dancers. You know, we, it was a collaborative thing. I recommended some people, but you know, she was actually out there. And then some of the dancers recommended others, and that's how Danny came uh, to to perform with us. Um, and it was it it just you know it was organic, and 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 as people uh, knew of others, you know we brought them in. And for me, what was very important was to make sure that we brought young Latino and Latina artists because the 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 excuse all the time is we can't find the talent. Uh, it's not out there. Nobody knows opera. You know, Latinos are not interested in opera. And that's not true. You know, Latinos are not interested in ballet. That's not true. So I really wanted to see um, the, the explosion, as Janelle says, the explosion of the talent of our Latino artists, our, our young raza. So it was very important to me that we, that we bring them forward. And and uh, and people who are polished, you know, they're polished, they're experienced, they've been they've been working their craft for a while. It's not like they just started yesterday. So I'm very proud of all of our performers and our of our choreographer. Certainly, you know, uh, our our director, Dr. Stephen Losa, who has been so generous with us in his time and uh, in his counsel, and that he's going to now be part of this group is is really amazing. Okay, uh, Rosa, if you could uh, unmute mute, uh, just tell us a little bit about your audition process and, and your introduction to this production. Hi, everyone. Yeah, I actually was brought in um, through uh, the director of the uh, Santa Monica College Opera Program, Janelle De Stefano, Dr. Janelle De Stefano. Um, and I think David had been in touch with her um, through another uh, collaborator. Um, was that through Anne-Marie Ketchum? Yes. Yeah. Yes, Anne-Marie Ketchum. Uh -huh. so Anne-Marie Vega's wife. Mm -hmm. She's an incredible soprano. And I was in the production uh, at that time at Santa Monica College Opera Theater. And um, this just sounded like 
just right up my alley. I was so excited to learn about the opera and, and the whole, you know, just reading the description. And I contacted David and I, I think I, I believe I sent in some audios, um, maybe a video, a couple of audition videos. And then David reached out to me right away. Um, and originally there were two uh, female uh, roles, um, Sochi Quetzal and Monarca. And I originally was cast as uh, Monarca, who is the mezzo in the in the in the piece. And through a cancellation of of another singer, I ended up singing both uh, Sochi Quetzal and Monarca at the La Plaza like debut, I guess our our, our, our run there. Uh, and it was it was just an incredible experience um, to you know like make it happen with with all the elements. And I think. I, I persuaded David a little to to change, you know, the Sochi Quetzal range so that it would be more, um, I'm a mezzo-soprano, so it would be a little bit more in my range so that I could sing it um, well. And yeah, it's been evolving ever since, but that's how I got involved with Circo Anahuac. And, and Dr. Losa, uh, you're, you're listed as the director now, but but in the, the genesis of this piece, what, was your, what were your contributions, please? Mm -hmm. I think you need to unmute, please. <laughs> Thank you. I came into the project about a year ago, the reason being that uh, the year before when they did the production at the Plaza, uh, David and Maria Elena had approached me to see if UCLA <clears throat> might want to help a little. So we made a, a very modest contribution to the production at the Plaza. And I went to see it and I was extremely impressed uh, just like Maria Elena was just saying, what really impressed me was to see all these very young Chicana, Chicano uh, singers, dancers, uh, people who had done costumes, who had done the staging. And I just felt that uh, I had never seen anything done like this before. Not only was it an opera, but it was uh, written and, uh, you know, by two of our people, uh, David and Maria Elena so that it, it was more of an inside view of Mexican uh, Azteca culture, if you want to say, Chicano culture, really. Mm -hmm. So, um, but what really impressed me was these young people studying opera at, at uh, Cal State Long Beach, Cal State LA, uh, I think uh, Santa Monica College, there we have, mm -hmm. um, just mentioned. And so it, uh, it opened my eyes because at UCLA, you, you tend to see the so-called mainstream all the time devoid of most of our uh, people. You know, there's very few of us. So I told David and Maria Elena, I'd like to still be involved somehow. And before I knew it, they asked me to be the director, which I, uh, you know, was a little <laughs> hesitant because my time, but you know, I thought about it and I said, this project is so important. I'm going to carve out space uh, in my time and make it part of my work. And so part of that was also to bring in, uh, I thought it was important that we get UCLA involved. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had planned a performance at UCLA last spring. Unfortunately, that had to be canceled due to COVID, but we're, we still have it scheduled for the future. I also thought it was important to try to get maybe some of our students involved. And that's why uh, Joe Green uh, is here with us. By the way, Joe is half Chicano. <laughs> yes, <laughs> in case you didn't notice. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it's a very unique, and I would say, uh, not only innovative, but important project for our community. All right. Uh, now, you talked about UCLA contributing a bit for the production. This was, you know, besides getting all these moving pieces, the, 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 mm -hmm. the dancers, the musicians, of course, the, the production designers and so on. Somebody had to pay for this. So what was the process of, of going out and getting funding uh, for this? And what role did the East Side Arts Initiative have in this piece? The, the East Side Arts Initiative was critical to us being able to perform and to have the production um, come, come alive and come through. Um, and so was La Plaza, you know. Um, La Plaza de Cultura y Artes is a class act. You are now uh, in, <clears throat> tied with uh, the Side Arts Initiative. And I think that that is uh, really important because you have brought together 
uh, a venue with a funding source. Um, and, and I think that it's what it spells is opportunity. It spells opportunity for our community and communities that are normally not uh, reached out to or not brought in to the process of art, indigenous art, uh, cultural art, you know, and cultural representation, you're making that possible, you know. And so we received a grant from the Eastside Arts Initiative, it was $20,000. It was a matching grant, so I had to raise the other 20, and I did. <laughs> um, La Plaza opened its doors. We didn't have to pay anything for rehearsals. The space was there for us. Um, it, everyone from the, the CEO to um, the guards out at, 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 the, um, at the space, at the venue, were just absolutely wonderful people. And so we had a really good time and we felt very safe going there at night, you know, to do our rehearsals and, and you know, play the music and everything else, you know. So it was a real pleasure to be at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes and to have that as our first exposure um, our first rendition was 40 minutes, you know, and that's, and what was interesting with our um, audience is that people caught on to that because people would ask the question, oh, is this a lab? Is this, you know, the beginning? Are you going to do more? So they could tell, you know, and they wanted more. So that is why we've continued to work on it and expand it. And I think when David is finished with the music, it'll probably be an hour and 15 minutes. So it's still a mini opera but it'll be at its fullest. Thank you. Uh, again, you know, if, for those that don't know, the Eastside Arts Initiative, it's a, it's a, a project of La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, uh, some uh, endowed money set aside specifically for the cultivation of, of artists, uh, arts organizations and others uh, to help them uh, with productions, with uh, their, their careers. Uh, it's a competitive program, so, uh, if you go to eastsideartsinitiative.org, you, you, they presently have a, a, a couple grant programs uh, that are open now, uh, and I'll post that information on the chat and uh, in our comment section later. Uh, and now, now let's talk a little bit about the, the actual lead up to the opening. And, and if I may, I'm going to share here uh, the the graphic that was created by one yes. of your your uh your team lalo yes. alvaraz of course the the cartoonist the editorial writer the the writer for uh, he's a multi-hyphenate a, a great uh asset to our community but he came up with this uh, this design could you tell us a little bit about that um actually you know, um, again, Lalo is, is another person that we were able to bring in thanks to Janelle. Uh, they've been longtime friends. And, uh, and, and of course, you know, I, I knew him as well, but not as much as Janelle, as Janelle has for, for years because they're neighbors in Whittier and so on. And, um, and, and of course, I knew of his work. And that's, that was the whole point. You know, I wanted to bring people again to show the talent that's available in the community. And he was very gracious about it. He was more than willing, you know, to do, um, to do designs, you know, preliminary designs and so on. And then there was Daniel Gonzalez who actually brought the, the, the designs that, of course, the, um, the design that you have with the, the, the twin volcanoes and the two Aztec lovers, that was, um, Lalo did that himself. But the designs for the actual opera, um, he did the designs and then Danny uh, Gonzalez brought them to life. You know, he constructed the, 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 uh, the main uh, parts of it. Um, and uh, so, uh, again, you know, it's that issue of bringing up the talent, the young talent that we have in the community that is very experienced, you know, experienced young talent that really work on their craft. Um, and so it, it was just, you know, people who knew people and we just kept reaching out to different people that we knew. And do you know anybody that does this? And do you know anybody that does that? And, and you, we formed this really organic, uh, wonderful group. All right, great. Well, I'm going to go ahead and share us uh, a little bit more, some more graphics here. Here's the, uh, uh, a flyer that was produced uh, for El Circo Arahuac. 
Uh, the initial dates, of course, October 6th, uh, sold out your first performance. Mm -hmm. uh, it went, it was a Saturday and Sunday, uh, Saturday evenings and like a Sunday midday. Uh, tickets were sold, of course, uh, through uh, we, both tickets, uh, uh, general admission, VIP, and also for groups. Uh, here's uh, the, the very first program. Uh, our, our, in fact, it was extended. So this shows both uh, December, November 3rd and, and November 4th. And here you have all these people that were, uh, that, excuse me, let me go back here, that were part of it, Eastside Arts Initiative, of course, uh, LA Community College District, uh, UCLA Herb Alpert School of Music, and then also other individuals, Susana Guzman, the opera singer who has been a pro, uh, uh, one of our En Casa Con La Plaza sessions. She is, was a guest of Dan Guerrero and his happy hour, all these high schools. So it was, again, a, a very uh, uh, collaborative mm -hmm. uh, production. Yes. <clears throat> Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. It was uh, just an incredible mix of uh, talent and personnel that blended well together. And uh, um, it was just exciting to see all this happening, especially at the rehearsals and we uh, uh, with the live musicians as well. And uh, the ensemble, you know, they, they did a great job they, in terms of space they realized that they needed to push back a little bit and lower the volume a bit and stuff. So, uh, but it was all good. And, and everybody that was involved just really made it special. And you're right. It did. We did have an extension. Uh, we were asked by La Plaza to uh, extend, extended another two, two shows, I believe. And uh, uh, those were sold out because uh, the, like Maria Elena mentioned earlier, the, the uh, uh, people were just really involved with it and they wanted more. Yeah. So that was All right. Well, well, here's a, 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 a an image we have. This is hey, you, right, David? It. That's Danny. That's Danny. Danny, Danny excuse me, Danny. Danny well, Esquetan. I was going to look that here. Mm -hmm. Danny. Yeah, that, yeah, that's me right there, Esquetan. <laughs> so yeah, that's that was what was going. Picture. I imagine this was one of your, you know, pre-performance, of course. But what were your thoughts? Uh, on opening the opening day opening day was super exciting it was a definitely new experience for all of us uh, it was very personal mm -hmm. we had the audience right there uh maybe like five feet to 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 where we were performing mm -hmm. so um we had to make sure that we were all in our characters uh to make sure that the audience got a fulfilling experience as well mm -hmm. it was really exciting all right. I'm going to go through a couple more uh, uh, images here. This is uh, images from the opera itself, um, mm -hmm. taken by Daniel Hernandez for, for one of our leading publications here, LA Taco, uh, another of the, of, the, of the group here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and here we have, this is Janelle. Yeah. That's <laughs> so these are our early shots trying to uh, really, so our show is, has a black lighting. Um, and um, these, all, these images were all conceptually designed. I mean, the, the staff that I'm carrying is a desi was designed by Lalo Caras and then was, um, was uh, mastered, remastered by, um, by uh, uh, Gonzalez, you know. Um, Daniel. Yeah, Daniel. And so, um, his take on it, because we discussed the black lighting that was introduced to us by our first director. And, and so you could see all the, you know, that conceptual design. I wish we had a picture. You could see another, uh, an image of the illustration that Lalo did to you see that final product, because that, that, all, that process was another amazing process to see. And, and, and all that black lighting in the costuming was, was paint, you know, so we, each each piece was was dub was a, a collaborative of, of of all of us really it was Daniel myself and 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 Lalo you know Lalo's original designs um, Dan Danny's uh, um, head pieces that he created out of those designs and then the costuming that uh, we created to kind of uh, 
you know, master to, co to, co to complete that image, really. But the, the, the paint was amazing. You know, the minute you could, you put on that paint and the black lighting hit it, it just, it just trans, we, we transformed into to, to different people, you know, to, to different characters. And that's really what the opera is it's, it's about. And uh, like Danny said, uh, Cabrera said, you know, we had to get into character and that's what we did. The minute we put on these pieces, the minute the makeup was, was, was done for us, it, we were no longer uh, Janelle right. and Danny. You know, we were, we became La Monarca, we became um, Osolot, we became uh, these characters and, 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 and so close to the audience was just really unique because, you know, we, it was a small venue, <laughs> a creative, right, a creative theater with, with aisles that we created with those seats and, and making sure that we, like Danny said, not stepping on each other and not stepping on, on, our, uh, on our guests but then really kind of transcending everyone in that room to another time. That was a big deal for us to make sure we transcended um, and, and to, to feel like you were in another, completely other world. Right. Um, so, yeah, it was really neat. <laughs> well, here we're gonna uh, uh, treat everybody with a, with a short clip uh, showing El Cinco Anahua. Here goes. Mm -hmm. See if we could make it happen here.
man. That's thrilling. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was there at one of your performances, and, and I got to tell you, it was quite a, a sensory experience with the singing, the dancing, the music going on. Uh, no, this captured a little bit of it, but no, I'm looking forward to, to future live performances. Uh, it got quite a reception, uh, I must say. We had, uh, of course, we, we've uh, sold out shows. Uh, and how did that, that make you feel? Oops, sorry. How did, how did that, uh, how did, was the reception? What, what were your thoughts having the production finally after all these months uh, uh, being there and, and seeing what kind of uh, uh, reaction you got from the crowd? Well, uh, the, for for me, the it was just amazing to see all this happening, <clears throat> and uh, like Janelle and Danny said, that it was very close, almost an intimate performance. Uh, we only had, I believe, seventy seats, but seventy five seats for the performance, so it was very close, and uh, uh, it was just really amazing to see it get filled up. You know, we didn't know where we were going to be at the first day. Uh, it was a Friday evening, traffic you know, at that time, you know, in 2018. Uh, we had all those kind of things going on in our heads, like mm -hmm. there's traffic. Will, will they find parking downtown? Uh, are they going to have dinner at Alvera Street and then miss it or something, you know? <laughs> uh, at that time, we only knew that it was 40 minutes long. So, you know, if they came in late, you're going to miss, uh, you know, five minutes. You only get 35 minutes of it. So... Uh, it was it was really amazing to see it fill up like this, and I was uh, downstairs with uh, the ticket people that were accepting the tickets, and uh, just to hear the vibration downstairs uh, of of the general public coming in, they didn't know what to expect. I think, and you could just feel that energy in there. And then when the performance started. Uh, actually, the, the like Janelle mentioned, the neon lighting, or I'm sorry, the black lighting that was involved. As you could see, all the black light on the costumes and the headdresses and all that just made it even more. I mean, they, people were, I believe, really blown away by it, and, um, and just as much as we were blown away by their reception, and they uh, they gave us standing ovations. They did, you know, all that kind of cool stuff, and uh, it was really nice. My you want to? Yeah, I, <laughs> I was I was really thrilled. I mean, after after all the rehearsals, after we had a lot of challenges to tell you the truth, bringing it to the stage, and um, Janelle was so patient <laughs> uh, because you know it was we couldn't find all the pieces that would fit fit together. We would bring in people, but somehow they didn't work out, you know. And so you have to every time that happens, you have to start again. We would go to different funding sources, one of which, you know, Dr. Losa was associated with, and he gave like this big, big speech to the to the to the group about why they should fund it, and they still didn't, you know. And it was just all those things, you know. We had funding issues, we had staffing issues, so many things. But I, I really believe that everything happens when it's supposed to, and that the people that are supposed to come together do. And so when everyone came together, it, it, was, it, it was really a smooth process. It was very interesting in that sense that we were able to find the right people for the right positions. And so after seeing all of that, you know, and then to see it on the stage and to see, to see these, these vibrant young people take over and just do what they had to do, make do with a very small stage really because, you know, the musicians took up almost half of it, you know, and, and that's just the way it is because of, you have to have all that, have to have all that instrumentation, but they made you, they figured it out and, and, you know, we got it done. And I just kind of felt like, you know, my children were up there. Let's put it that way. You know, that's how, that's really how I felt. That's how close it felt, it felt for me. Like my children were the ones that were out there performing. Yeah. How about you, Danny? What were your, uh, your thoughts there? Uh, my thoughts were that it was like an ama amazing show. Uh, one thing that happened during the show was I actually rekindled one of my high school relationships. Um, 
uh, audience member out of nowhere came to watch our show and uh it turned out that we went to high school together and uh so like we just you know it was just an amazing connection that this show made for all of us all right uh janelle your thoughts on the opening night uh it was uh it was just truly it was like a whirlwind of every like just watching the video right now um i just could put myself backstage again you know and and feel all of those emotions that was that was going through my body during it was it was what an amazing ride just perf and 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 to be enveloped like to be in that home in at home at la plaza because we had already been there rehearsing at, at night and 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 you know by ourselves putting those pieces together like maria elena said and then to to share what we've been working on uh it was like that like D david said how or the people they're gonna come and we you know we knew it was sold out already but still it was it was those those butterflies that were in my in my tummy knowing that they were gonna see they were gonna see it for the first time that i we were gonna share this magic with them for the first time and so that magic just right now just watching it right now i felt that magic again and i and i know all those pieces coming together and that with that opening night really was very magical for all of us because we we saw it too as, as as much as the 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 crowd felt that energy we were feeling that energy as a as a as an ensemble mm -hmm. because all those like the the music the music ensemble they were rehearsing amongst with themselves the dance ensemble had danced rehearsed with themselves and the same thing with the with the singers you know the 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 vocalists were rehearsing amongst themselves and then we at, for rehearsals we came together as a unit so it was and it was only days really it felt like it felt like hours but it was days that we were putting these pieces together to to present so um it was pretty amazing just just i i mean it's two years ago it doesn't feel like it's two years ago but it feels like home you know so i'm really excited to see what's next for you know that was just 40 minutes i i i am so excited even more now to see how it's going to to and you know how to how how what the vision is with the with that with the past vision and what where we're going I'm, i can't wait to see it because the story continues it's you know there's there's more parts to that story that we haven't been with that we're gonna drop in and i'm really pumped for that for that to see so right. well, well we'll have a little sneak preview of that uh to okay. come but, uh, but rosa tell us about uh opening night for, for you or at least the, the run there at la plaza i think everything's been said it was just such a thrilling opportunity i think my favorite part was the q a's also and meeting the audience um people were very moved people were um you know, families who grew up in Mexico or they lived there for a long time, they were sharing how that story was, you know, just resonated with them and it really touched their hearts. And um, we had people get emotional sharing that, you know, it made them miss home. And uh, it, that was the amazing part of, of the experience for me, the community that came out and in droves to support us um, at La Plaza. All right. And it was, uh, it was in, in droves. We did have, uh, again, sold out the first run and then brought in a couple additional performances. But this is just a, a small, uh, just a few images of, uh, of one of your nights there. Uh, I guess this was a curtain call. No curtain, but this was a curtain call. And they're right in the middle of Lalo Alcaraz. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 one of the principles in, in the, the design aspect. And here we have another shot uh, with the members of the Eastside Arts Initiative. Uh, the woman with the rebozo there, Lupe Arriola, the, the mm -hmm. chair of the Eastside Arts Initiative. And then along a uh, gentleman with the hat is Armando Zuron, uh, mm -hmm. also on the uh, Eastside Arts Initiative. And, um, and plus, we incredible, not just the, 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 um, the audience, was enthused about it. Also the media. Here we had uh, LA Times uh, mm -hmm. covered the show, uh, put it on their calendar section with a wonderful review. 
uh, LA Taco, a local publication, called it a psychedelic circo, uh, <laughs> retelling the volcano origin story, and then even respected arts uh, uh, publication, Hyper Allergic, yes. uh, did a nice review as well. So you got the audience uh, uh, applause, you got the critics applause, and then, of course, after the run, you had plans for, for future. Uh, uh, and so tell us what happened after that. So I, I just wanted to say that Joe, Joe wanted to say something, and I think he, 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 he is one of our newer cast members. Um, he has started rehearsing um, individually, you know, uh, but he has been working with David. Um, he's going to be, you know, one of our new cast members. And I would just, if, that, if that's okay, if he can say something. Of course, because of course. He please. has a perspective as well. Thank you, Joe. Come on Thank you, Professor Yepes. I just wanted to comment on one of the most exciting parts of this is seeing how the opera is growing. You know, I, I wasn't there at the uh, original premiere, uh, La Plaza, but uh, I've seen a few of the videos. I've seen a number of the recordings and, you know, the music's quite different than when it initially was written. There has been so much material added. There's been so much orchestration. There's been so much addition of new solo parts, new cadenzas, you know, uh, new, new choral parts. And it's just, it's all very exciting. And it's, uh, it's so worthwhile telling this, uh, the Aztec mythology. And uh, it really is a privilege to be able to perform this. All right, good. Well, thank you. Uh, 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 right after, not immediately after, but, uh, after the run at La Plaza, you did have a, another uh, performance at, uh, at in Pasadena's A Noise Within yes. uh, in their uh, Noise Now series. So let mm -hmm. me just show you real quickly the, the, the program, the front program here. If you can tell us how this came to be. This was almost, uh, the, uh, almost a year after the, the initial run at La Plaza. Right. Well, um, the following year, um, John, apparently Jonathan Munoz Proud was uh, um, hired by A Noise Within to create A Noise Now, to bring in uh, diverse artists, uh, diverse performances, and so on. <clears throat> and he contacted us, ba us based on the, um, the publicity well, he, that he had seen in the LA Times and other articles. And so, and that he had spoken already with you. He had met people from La Plaza de Cultura y Artes. And so he decided to contact us and ask us if we were interested in doing a, uh, a run as a um, artist in residence. And so, um, you know, David and I discussed it and we thought, well, this is an opportunity to, to and lengthen, you know, the, the opera, you know, to bring in more elements to it. And so we did. We created five new songs and we brought in a new character, the king. Um, and this is something that, that David very much wanted because that's part of the, that is part of the story. So we do it, bring in the king and, um, and, and that worked very well. It worked very well and it was a lab. It was still a laboratory because uh, the, 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 the singers had to learn new material. Um, the choreographer also had to, you know, bring in some new steps and, and new movement uh, um, in some places, but it worked, you know, it worked and we actually grew the, the, the space uh, where we had it was in their rehearsal room, which usually can seat about 80 people, but there were 110 people there at the performance yeah. and, uh, and they had to turn away another 12 because there just wasn't any more room. Uh, but it was very, you know, it was very nice. It was very homey. Uh, the children that attended, they were all put in the front row and they were sitting on the, on the floor and they got them cushions so they could sit on cushions. So it all looked very much like, you know, we were performing to, to a family. And, right. um, and it was, uh, the, the audience was very, very uh, sweet. You know, they were, they were <clears throat> extremely receptive. Um, they, some of them had a, had read the articles. Uh, a couple of people had attended the, the performances at La Plaza. Um, so they were extremely supportive. You know, it was a very nice, it was a one night performance and we were there like for 10 days preparing for that. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and A Noise Within uh, really, really loved what we had to do. So they, they would like us to go back, you know, and what we would like to do, of course, is eventually stage El Circo there. But we have other plans and 
Dr. Steven Losa has plans for us. So Dr. Losa, would you like to talk about what you think we should be doing as the <laughs> next steps? Please do, Dr. Losa, join in. Can, can you hear me, Dr. Losa? Yes, uh, in terms of the next step. The next yes. step, yes. Having a little, little break up there. Oh, okay. Yes, well, I think that uh, the plans, uh, as David said, he has expanded uh, the music uh, quite a bit. And so it's, it's becoming more of a full-fledged uh, opera, I think, mm -hmm. in terms of time, in terms of, so it would be great to see, obviously, more funding Mm -hmm. to uh, be able to enhance uh, the various things, uh, although it's amazing what was done with the budget that they had uh, in terms of uh, staging and costumes and mm -hmm. rehearsing, uh, which is uh, an, an important factor. So I would like to see, uh, you know, as soon as this pandemic is done, we are talking about the idea of possibly doing some online uh, mm -hmm performances, maybe excerpts, or maybe a section of the opera. Uh, we're trying to work with uh, the UCLA Technology Office to see if we can do some of it in a recorded context, which is a very better way to do it than by Zoom because of the synchronization, et cetera, the quality. Uh, when the pandemic is over, it would be good to finally do a live performance. I believe that uh, Maria Elena and David, the Whittier College performance is suspended. Yes, uh, the uh, um, Shannon and, uh, performance arts. Right, and we, and we still have a reservation at UCLA mm -hmm. for Schoenberg Hall, and we have some minimal funding from UCLA for in terms of covering the tech expenses and some, uh, you know, modest contribution possibly to musicians. I'm hoping that, uh, uh, that David might uh, be able to uh, be interested in the idea of actually using some of the UCLA musicians um, and yes. a conductor from their orchestra program. Uh, and that would bring uh, more synergy with uh, UCLA. My, and so that we could do a full fledged performance, maybe slash fundraiser at UCLA by some time within the next year, once we're able to go back on campus. Um, I don't think there will be any live performances for the rest of this academic year through June. But we're hoping that in the fall, uh, things may open up. And uh, I think that the importance of doing this at places like UCLA and uh, uh, other, other places that uh, is uh, number one, to let the faculty and the administrators at places like that, where they have a very big opera program, realize what's going on with something like this and how much uh, they are not paying attention to this. And mm -hmm. I've tried to get the opera director there involved. He said that he will come and, and try to do some uh, critiques of the performances. Uh, but I had, to pu I had to push to make that happen. Mm -hmm. So in a way, it's almost like we have to educate them. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's one of the main purposes of this program. Uh, they have to see that there are people in the community like all of these incredible young performers uh, that should probably, many of them should be studying at UCLA. So that's part of my goal. Uh, and also I think to give the production the recognition uh, it needs. And uh, so let's see what we can do, you know. Um, I think there's possibilities to get more funding and to get more dissemination of this uh, beautiful project. Well, thank you. Uh, and, and speaking of, of the expansion of the project, David, if you could set, up, set us up for, for a little sneak peek at what people can expect once, we, once the production is out uh, in front of the public again. Okay, yes. Um, what uh, you're going to play is um, you have the version of scene four that was performed at La Plaza. Uh, that scene uh, was written for uh, mezzo soprano, <clears throat> excuse me, and the ensemble, and uh, uh, let's see, tenor as well. Um, now, with this, uh, with the first version, <clears throat> it only lasts about two minutes and 20 seconds. The first version did, the one that we performed at La Plaza. And now I have revised it. 
this year, I just finished the, uh, the revision of that scene uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, I sent it to Rosa and Joe and to Janelle and Danny, to everybody actually on, that's here. Um, uh, it's now four minutes and approximately 45 seconds long. So there's a good two minutes and 20 seconds more music written. That's a lot of music, you know, and um, I discovered in the first scene that I felt that uh, my uh, writing for the voice, I think I was approaching it more as an instrument, a physical instrument, like a flute or a clarinet, and not as an actual voice. So in this revised scene, I was able to elongate the, the singing. Uh, in uh, Rosa's part, which she'll demonstrate later, uh, uh, the first version has O Gran Garriero, but she's singing it, O Gran Garriero, I got it, da, 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 da. But now in the new version, it's O Gran Garriero, ah, 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 ah. There's a lot of uh, more um, ornamentation to the music in the vocalizing. So that gave you more uh, time, plus more orchestration writing more for the instruments to fill in the gaps in there for the new new parts and um, it was a lot of fun so now uh, like Maria Elena said we uh, <clears throat> added some new characters and some new scenes there's also a new scene which uh, hasn't been performed yet uh, but it's for soprano and ensemble it's for colibri which is a new character uh, the the hummingbird yes right yes the hummingbird and um, uh, it's scored for a soprano voice and ensemble only. So she's going to be the first character to really sing in the opera now, as opposed to uh, Sochi Quetzal and Osolado in the, in the uh, original version. Okay. Well, David, in the interest of time, if you don't mind, we're going to uh, skip the original version. If we could just jump into the new version. Sure. Uh, and Rosa, yeah. were you still going to be able to? Okay. Yeah. So you're going to play the mm -hmm. whole version and then she'll sing her part live. Okay, go ahead and... and uh, uh, so, so Rosa needs yeah. to play it. Yeah. David Rosa. Rosa needs to play it on her, on her end. Oh. Go ahead, Rosa. Yeah, if you could get, get off... Un the... Unmute yourself. Yes. Thank you. Okay, great. Can you hear me? Okay, so what yes. we're going to do is play it off my uh, recording so that I can be synced when it comes to Sochi Quetzal's part. Uh, and um, yes. in the interest of time, um, what I wanted to say is that uh, this scene is um, between uh, Sochi Quetzal and Ocelot. They are the main character, well, two of the main characters, and they're in love, but yes. uh, Ocelot is singing uh, his part here, which will actually be Joe. Um, the tenor uh, will sing, um, and he is hearing the, the 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 call of the war drum. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Sochi Quetzal is obviously very distressed by this. So um, my part will be, O oh, gran guerrillero, my heart bleeds to know that Huehuetl is calling and I must let you go. But here in this clearing where Sensonle runs free, which is the mockingbird, I swear on my honor, forever yours I'll be. So she makes that, um, that promise to him in this time as he gets ready to go to war. So let's play that. Okay, so I'll start it from the top. This is the revised scene four.
Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, all our viewers <laughs> out there, thanks so much for yeah. coming in. Oh, any last words from, from, let's start with Maria Elena. Any last words about what's going on, about what's next? The reaction you received? Yes. Yeah, please. Um, First of all, thank you for everyone who is uh, our audience who is out there. I've been looking at the comments that you sent in. Very supportive. Uh, we're very excited that you joined us tonight. Um, we, we very much uh, want to uh, continue to engage our audience um, online if we, if we can't do it any other way, but we will do it for now uh, since the pandemic is on. But once you know the pandemic is over, we will go back to the idea of having a fundraiser um, to be able to uh, gather some funds so that we can bring, you know, the opera to the stage. That's very, that's very important. Um, what, uh, what you can do, you know, is number one, you know, we're always looking for sponsors, as you saw on the um, flyer. That, that was shown, we had, we had sponsors. Sponsorship is very, very important so that we can put the opera on the stage. Um, and so we're lo looking for sponsors. So if you know of any, you know, you can send in the information um, to Abelardo and he'll be happy to relay it to us. Uh, we need your support, you know, continue to uh, attend whatever it is that we offer, whether it's online or, or in person, eventually in person. Um, but uh, we do, uh, and we, we want to very much uh, to be part of the community by bringing these, uh, this work and showing people um, that an Aztec opera can be successful, it can be an opera, and that, um, as you saw from Rosa's performance, we have wonderful people that are joining us, um, creative people, you know, and... Uh, people who have their hearts in this production from Dr. Losa to everybody else who's here on stage. So uh, just uh, thank you very much. I'm very appreciative and uh, keep looking out for us because we're coming and we're gonna, do, <laughs> we're gonna do as much of a great job as we can just like we did before because we don't believe in doing anything less. So thank you so much. Thank you Abelardo for uh, inviting us and for having us here. Um, it's really a pleasure. It's a true, it's a real pleasure. It's, it's been our pleasure as well. I dropped in on the, the chat section and then also on Facebook and then my watch party, the, your Facebook page so that people could communicate with you directly and you could uh, find out more about upcoming performances or at least know what's going on with the, with the production. David, any last words, please? Well, yeah, the, thank you again, Abarlado, and uh, to everyone here tonight uh, for participating. We really, uh, uh, just it's really fantastic to be able to uh, uh, showcase uh, some of the new music now that's being written for the extended version. 
uh, revised version for the opera. Uh, uh, Rosa did a great job with her vocalizing there. And I know Joe's gonna do a great job when, when uh, he's ready. And uh, there's, uh, it's gonna be very exciting because um, <clears throat> some of the uh, new scenes, uh, actually if uh, at the end of the scene that Rosa performed, uh, the idea is to have a, uh, the villagers in the scene uh, uh, from the, the king's people in the scene as well. So that would include Janelle's and the dancers and uh, uh, all that stuff like that with, I think Marielena even put uh, trees, moving trees. So everybody's <laughs> dancing. Cause there's one part in there where it says dance, dance and celebrate. So I wanted to create mm -hmm. that, that, uh, that, that idea of a celebration with the, with the townspeople. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Really looking forward to it. And thank you very much to everyone who's watching as well. Sure. Well, I think and if, Pastor Lota, if, if we have you back at La Plaza, you, you're going to have to do it on our outdoor stage, most definitely. Uh, oh, yes, yeah. that'll be perfect. Dr. Losa, any last words, please? Yes. No, no, just uh, adelante. I agree with what everybody's saying. I do look forward uh, to us being back uh, in, uh, you know, in live communication with each other uh, because that's how this music and uh, uh, choreography and staging is put together. Uh, it is for live performance and uh, I'm looking forward to getting a date uh, as soon as we can for Schoenberg Hall. Schoenberg holds 500 people and I think the goal is to have every seat filled and that's going to help spread the word more and there will be a lot of young, especially Chicano Latino students attending that. And again, that's how you get this concept out there so that people know that it uh, exists. So I'm looking forward to that. Yes. Well, thank you. Rosa, any last words, please? Thank you for a wonderful performance, by the way. Yes. Just wonderful to be able to sing, even if it's on Zoom or Facebook Live. <laughs> and I just want to shout out to Jerry Blackburn and JP Torres. They're in the, I just saw them now in the, in the participants list. Uh, Yay. 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 Uh, Yay. Hi, Jerry. Hi, it's JP. part of our stage management for that show uh, at La Plaza. I mean, we couldn't have done this without them. I just, I'm looking now at the participants. It's wonderful to have support here from our fans. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Joe, let's hear from you. I know you're, you're new, new to this, but uh, your last words, please. You know, um, it is such a unique opportunity to get to work on an opera about Aztec mythology. You know, it's, it's rare to be able to work on a contemporary opera. It's even rarer to be able to work with a living composer and librettist. <laughs> you know, usually you have, to, you have to look up to the sky or to the vine, what a, what a Mozart would yeah, yeah. You know, I can, I can call Professor Reyes right up and ask him exactly what he wants. And, uh, you know, you go. Having, it's it's really to the lost art form to um, have a composer work with a singer and write a part mm -hmm. for a singer. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most exciting things I've done in my, uh, my short career in opera. <laughs> and, uh, I, I will not soon be forgetting it. We look forward to hearing your voice. Uh, Janelle. Uh, you know, I, um, I'm really excited about our future together. This it, just today, just really Thank you, Abelardo, for, for uh, giving us this opportunity to, to, to see our extended family here because it, it really, it, it, it feels like home. So um, I'm happy to, to, to create again. And listening to Rosa um, just, you know, just brings back all of, all of all that work that we did and listening to David's new, new work again, I've heard it recently, but, but it's, it's, it's something when the magic happens when it's combined, you know, and, and um, I saw a shout out of Rosa's friend saying dance break, Rosa, you know, dance break. And, and that's exactly what I'm thinking in my head. I'm thinking about, wow, where does the movement fit in? You know, where am I going to put this? And, yeah. and um, that's the way we work together. You know, we, we're all connected that way. We're all feeling it together. So um, and now bringing in uh, some fantastic artists like Joe and some new, um, some new dancers. I, I'm so thrilled to, to welcome these new dancers and, and a couple of new, new dancers as well that we're bringing in. So 
it's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you. All right, Danny, as as one of the 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 veterans in the, in the dance uh, troupe, uh, final words, please. Uh, final words. Um, I'm excited for what's in store for Encico on a Walk. Um, it, the development process is really exciting. So i um, looking forward to see what we create next for you guys. <laughs> yeah. yes. All right. Well, thank you so much, Danny. Um, this comes, unfortunately, we have to come to an end here. Those of you who maybe didn't catch the entire session, we recorded it. We'll be uploading it on our YouTube page at youtube.com slash La Plaza LA. I'm writing it down here on our comments uh, and the chat. Um, for upcoming, uh, that includes this one. Of course, we also interviewed the great Susana Guzman. Let's not talk, you know, how can we say there's not Latinos in opera? There are Latinos, Chicanos, right. Indian Americans in opera, including the great Susana Guzman. You can catch this session, her session, plus 80 plus and Casa con la Plaza sessions on our YouTube site, on our website, lapca.org, and on our YouTube page as well, all of you that joined us on YouTube. We had so many people who joined us today. Giselle Padilla, thank you. Great job to everyone. Thank you, Rosa, particularly. Uh, Tony Mores, Boresi, a lot of little applause. Olivia Robledo from San Fernando Califas joined in today. Max Barrera, all the way from Jalapa, Veracruz, Mexico. We have on the southern wow. side, uh, Rosa Evangelina from North Hollywood, uh, close by here. We have uh, Charlene <laughs> Villaseñor Black, fantastic. Can't wait to see the finished opera. Congratulations to all, also a UCLA person here. Uh, uh, JP Torres, of course, bravo, so beautiful. Viewing from Chicago, Ellen T. Baird. And Gloria Alvarez, muchísimas gracias y felicidades de nuevo. Can't wait to see the newest production. Neither can we. Neither can we. All right. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Again, thank you to everybody. <laughs> uh, you could catch our upcoming uh, In Casa Con La Plaza sessions on our on Zoom, on our YouTube, I mean, on our Facebook page. You could catch them live or you could catch them later on. Coming up this Friday, I'm going to share the screen with you here because it's going to be a, I mean, this has been a fabulous week. It's been a crazy week and it's not over yet. <laughs> But here we have right. uh, the, celebrating the 25th year of travel tips to Atslan, Mark Torres from KPFK, who's been on the forefront of Latin alternative, Musica Alternativa, here yeah. in LA, introducing new bands, new uh, talent uh, mm -hmm. for 25 years now. And now a lot of the talent that he introduced on his show on KPFK have gone on to international superstardom. And so we might have some special surprises for that one. That's this Friday, November 6th at 7 o'clock on En Casa Con La Plaza. Thanks to our sponsors, SoCal Gas, California Humanities. Thanks to all the viewers. I mean, I'd like to be able to thank all of everybody who's been uh, on your cast, uh, on your ensemble, your production crew, Manfred yeah. Anaya, Rosa Beltran, Emilio Valdez, uh, Sheena Castillo, Jesse Maldonado, uh, John Asti, the, uh, the ensemble, John Asti on flute, Ron Barrows on trumpet, Brian Kennedy on percussion, Joe De Fiori on clarinet, Linda Michelu percussion, Chris Toon trombone, Craig Ware on tuba. Woo, that's a yes. lot of people. <laughs> of, of course, Daniel and Lalo and Dave Thomason, your conductor, and Alejandro Parra, your lighting designer, your costumes yes. by Julie Gonzalez. Yes. Now, and makeup by Carla. Copley, all your production assistants, everybody in El Sicor Anahuac. Thank you so much for being on tonight's En Casa Con La Plaza. Muy buenas noches a todos. Los vemos muy pronto. Buenas noches. Gracias. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs>